The NBA regular season sadly could be over. I know it's a pretty down night right now. But at least we can give out some awards. Psych! Let's go! Oh wait, some people actually think we shouldn't give out regular season awards. You, you walk home with this nice trophy, parents are all excited, no. I mean, what's that teaching kids? No, these are not participation trophies. They earned it. Yes, I do feel bad for some players who could have used those final 12 games to catch up, but I think we can fairly hand out regular season awards. In this video, we will name the MVP, Rookie of the Year, Most Improved Player, Sixth Man, Coach of the Year, and Defensive Player of the Year. Then we'll unveil what 70 NBA media people thought and who's likely to actually get these awards. Hey guys, Casey Kiernan, host the AM Hoops YouTube channel. Hit subscribe and notify, coming out with five quality videos per week. But this week, we are highlighting a different charity that we can support during this crazy time in the world. And today's charity is Feeding America. And Feeding America is the biggest hunger relief organization in the United States. They have over 200 food banks, 60,000 food pantries. Their response fund during this crisis is making a huge impact, and you guys can go donate at feedingamerica.org. Let's get into these awards and let's go big first. My MVPs, number one, LeBron James, followed by Giannis Antetokounmpo and Kawhi Leonard in third place. And immediately people are gonna say, you know Giannis's real plus minus is a full point higher than LeBron. You know, Giannis averages 1.09 points per possession as the pick and roll ball handler, and even more as the roll man. I got it. I know the numbers. I watch the games. No, I don't hate Giannis or the Bucks, but I'm not gonna let a box score determine for me who is more valuable to his team. It's about a lot more than that. LeBron James has led the Lakers to the best record in the West. For as great as the Bucks have been, LA is just two games behind them in the loss column. In the West. And if you do wanna talk stats, I'm good with that. How about when Giannis is off the floor, the Bucks still blow teams out. When LeBron is off the floor, the Lakers turn into the Orlando Magic offensively. Who's more valuable? LeBron changed his position, automatically becomes the best at it in the NBA. This is one of those seasons where people are getting bogged down with advanced analytics. When we look back at the bigger picture years from now, people are gonna go, you know, I think LeBron should've won MVP that year. People are just prisoners of the moment. Kawhi Leonard is my third place vote for MVP. The knock on Kawhi's whole career has been facilitating. This year he's got 7.3 assists per 100 possessions. I'm always gonna be amazed at Kawhi's ability to improve his game. He came into the league not known for his shooting, became a great shooter. Even Pop didn't see him becoming a star. Look at him now. I think load management means that Kawhi Leonard is gonna go down as the greatest player ever Never to win an MVP. I think he'll take all those finals MVPs instead though. Rookie of the year, my first place vote goes to Ja Morant and then Zion Williamson and then Kendrick Nunn. You didn't think I was going Zion here, right? I mean, you can't. I love what Zion has done. He's up there with Hakeem Olajuwon, Shaquille O'Neal, and Michael Jordan as far as NBA debuts go. But it's not even just about the amount of games played. Ja Morant has earned his Rookie of the Year. Yeah, Ja leads rookies in assists per game at 6.9. He's second in points per game among rookies, 17.6. But even more important than that, he is one of the most exciting people to watch already in the league. The test of any Rookie of the Year for me is, can they just jump right into the deep end and swim like a veteran? Ja clearly can, and he was leading the Grizzlies to the eighth seed despite a really tough schedule down the stretch. My coach of the year, first place is Nick Nurse, then Billy Donovan, and then Frank Vogel. Nick Nurse checks all of the boxes that you may have when you're arguing about who should be coach of the year. Did he beat expectations? Check. One of the best teams in the league? Check. Doing this without superstars? Check. Before the season, Vegas odds makers predicted the Raptors would win about 46 games. That would be about the sixth seed. Instead, they're at 46 when the season was suspended on pace for 59 wins, the two seed. 
For any of my sports bettors out there, you know that Vegas is rarely this wrong about anything in sports. That is a huge gap. 46 wins to on pace for 59. Shows how great of a coach Nick Nurse is. Plus, I think he is the most creative defensive mind in the league, too. I give a lot of love to Billy Donovan as well, who surpassed expectations in OKC. Although he does have Chris Paul, no one expected for them to be where they are. Frank Vogel got my third place vote. Yes, he's got a lot of talent, but he has guided this Lakers team to dominance seamlessly and navigated a really, really tough year to be a Laker. But at the end of the day, it's impossible to argue anyone but Nick Nurse deserves this award. My most improved player is Bam Adebayo, followed by Luka Doncic, then Brandon Ingram. The Heat trade Hassan Whiteside, Bam takes the starting role and turns himself into an all-star. That is the story this year for Bam Adebayo in a nutshell. Offensively, He's got a half more assists per game than last year. Better scoring. Now, of course, those will come with more minutes, right? But he is also successfully fit right next to Jimmy Butler, who's a huge part of this team, offensively and defensively. Speaking of defense, I know the Heat as a team are not elite this year. They're slightly above average. But Bam is elite in terms of individual defense. He's strong and long enough to guard bigs, even Giannis, and he's quick enough to cover perimeter players on switches. My other candidates here were Luka Doncic, who's made that jump from star to superstar, and Brandon Ingram, who is fulfilling his potential, should be a max player next year, but Bam's leap just more impressive. My sixth man of the year is Montrez Harrell, followed by Dennis Schroeder, and then Lou Williams. Now, if any of those six-man candidates in the whole league deserve a near-max contract and a starting spot somewhere, it is Montrez Harrell. Yeah, Dennis Schroeder and Lou Williams score more points. Schroeder is more efficient. He is a crucial reason why the Thunder are where they are. But the same can be said for Montrez Harrell. He is just a more dominant, dependable player. Now, the Clippers all year have dealt with consistency issues in their lineups, right? Paul George, Kawhi Leonard, load management and health issues. What they can depend on every night is Montrez Harrell. The same could be said for Lou Williams, right? Yeah, but not to the same degree. Recently, his defense has caught up to him. When the Lakers beat the Clippers in their last meeting this season, the Lakers were attacking Lou Williams as the weak link. That doesn't happen with Montrez Harrell. He went from a bench contributor and Lou Williams pick and roll sidekick to a guy that Doc Rivers runs plays through. My defensive player of the year is Giannis Antetokounmpo, followed by Anthony Davis, and then Bam Adebayo. Yes, Giannis is the best defensive player on the best defensive team, but also, they aren't nearly the same without him. Their defensive rating jumps from 96 and a half to 104.2 when he's off the floor. That's still elite, so they're great either way, but it's much better than Anthony Davis. The Lakers are actually a more efficient defense with AD off the floor. Now on off numbers do not tell the whole story here. Both AD and Giannis can guard every position. They're both good rebounders, but Giannis makes a bigger defensive impact. And speaking of team success on the defensive end, AD has five teammates who are former all defense. That means he's a new Laker and they've transformed into an elite defensive team, but AD has a lot of help. Giannis only has one teammate who's former all defense and that's Eric Bledsoe. I know that Brooke Lopez and Robin Lopez are having elite defensive seasons too, but Giannis has a bigger impact on why the Bucks are the number one defensive team in the league. So that's who I think should win these awards. Now let's look at who's actually gonna win these awards for all you people in the comments. Uh, MVP and Rookie of the Year. So ESPN polled 70 NBA media members to see who they would vote for. So it almost gives us a guaranteed look at who's gonna win these two awards. And let's start with Rookie of the Year. 100% of voters chose Ja Morant. That is amazing. I thought it would be a little more competitive, but you just can't get past the fact that Ja played 59 games and Zion got in only 19. No one's won Rookie of the Year playing fewer than 50 games, so it was basically impossible for Zion Williamson, even though he had a historic start. All right, now for the big one. 60 of 70 voters chose Giannis Antetokounmpo as the MVP. Only 10 with me chose LeBron James. 
Giannis and LeBron are individually amazing. We know this. Both of their teams are amazing in the East and the West, but these voters are prisoners of advanced statistics and the early lead that Giannis had in MVP. Now, if you've been following sports really closely the last decade plus, you know that advanced analytics are creeping more and more, especially into front offices. The guys who run baseball and basketball teams have like math and engineering degrees. They graduate from MIT, it's not jocks anymore, which I think is a good thing. It makes the product on the field or on the court smarter, more efficient, and better overall. But it's also creeping into media. And awards like this in MVP, media members are looking more and more at box scores than actual games. I think that's what's happening here with this MVP vote. But I think at some point, sports is gonna see that we've leaned a little too heavily on the numbers, and we need to find a comfortable place in the middle between the jocks and the eye test and the nerds in the spreadsheets. And when that happens years from now, people are gonna look back at 2020 as a year that LeBron should have won the MVP. Giannis and LeBron have comparable stats, but LeBron is clearly more valuable to the Lakers in a superior conference. Look, we don't know when the NBA season is gonna return. Probably it'll be the postseason when that happens. So I think at some point they will give out these awards just to keep us entertained, if anything. Then we can get to the playoffs and see who gets the actual only trophy that really matters. Support AM Hoops and click subscribe. Don't miss a daily NBA video.